welcome back. Uh, I want to, to show you a technique how to grind very large radii, or relatively large radii, on the end of parts. In this case, scraper blades. These are uh, Biax blades. Uh, I bought, I bought a, a Biax BL10 power scraper. And um, I, got, I also bought a set of blades, but I'm missing one with a, a small radius, like a radius 30. And this is already ground. This is a 30 millimeter radius here on the end, on the carbide. Uh, and I want to show you the technique to do it. Um, most people, perfectly reasonable, <laughs> uh, would do it freehand. But there is also a, a nice technique to do it uh, very controlled on a machine. And this technique has other uses too, so uh, might be might be valuable to show it. Let's say you have a scraper blade like this, uh, this uh, long style Biax blade with a uh, 60 millimeter radius here on the blade. And you want to change this radius. Normally you would go to your uh, um, to, uh, to your bench grinder with diamond wheel and just freehand it, check it with the gauge like this against light, finesse the grind, go back and forth until you have your radius that you want. That's perfectly fine. Thousands and thousands of scraper hands have done this machinery build as machinists. Everybody does it that way normally. If you want to get fancy, you can use a, a tool and cutter grinder or a, a debit grinder um, to get a perfect radius. Almost perfect, of course. Nothing is perfect. And then you, for the resharpening, you use uh, you, you do it freehand, um, just on a fine lapping disc or a very fine resin-bound diamond wheel. So I want to. I want to change this blade from a, a 60 radius to, um, to a 40 radius to do finer scraping with 60 is a bit coarse. And what I came up with is, is um, I'm going to use my tool and cutter grinder with the work head. This is the motor driven work head, but we will not use the motor drive. Uh, we could also use the normal indexing head. Doesn't matter really. I made this jig which has a shank that can be grabbed in the three chow chuck here or in a large collet. It has a slot milled in here that matches the blade. I will show you the, the shape of the slot later because there is a little trick to it. Um, and I have two screws with large washers as uh, work holding. It's just pinched down on the blade and hold it in place. Also, I have a flat milled here. That is, I, I uh, engraved it with die grinder here. That is 14 millimeters away from the center line. That's important later when we set it up. First, we clamp it in the three jaw. Make sure it's nice and tight. And we get our blade fumble our way into there, like this. And we semi-tighten the screws. So we can still slide the blade, but it doesn't fall out if we go upside down. Now we want to set our radius. As I said, this flat is 14 millimeters from the center line. So if we flush this up, almost and ground until we hit this flat we would have a radius 14. We want a radius 30 so we go 14 plus 16 is 30 so we need to set our calipers to 16 millimeters like this and we use the step back here on the caliper from from the flat, yeah, so much for sliding, and we slide the scraper blade up against the movable jaw of the scraper like this. Hold it in place until we grow a third arm. 
Then we add a little bit. We move the blade just a tiny bit more. And then we clamp it. We move the blade so we have some material at the radius 30 to grind away. Otherwise we would just end in nowhere. And you might already see where this goes. With the blade in the work head and by swinging the blade up and down, we're able to swing a perfect radius 30 now. Uh, now we can manipulate this over to, to the grinding wheel. This is a, one, a D125 wheel, which is fine for roughing. The work head is swung around five degrees. So I get already my five degree uh, angle, my negative five degree on the scraper blade. Okay, I have the hose of the dust extractor down here because I do not want to have all the carbide dust all over the shop. Um, and we're good to go. This is going to be loud because of the shot back. And to check our diameter or our radius, we can again use the calipers, just measuring down here, 16.2, um, isn't super critical because um, now we will swing the, the work head 5 degrees the other direction to create a second to create a roof shape so we have two usable cutting edges on both sides. Okay, loosening the, the lock screw, moving it around five degrees, other direction, and lock it. Five degrees is the common um, angle for scraping cast iron. Um, I'm going to blew up the face of the blade so we actually see what we're going to do. When we grind this blade we will start to see a metallic uh, colored stripe starting on the right side and the more we infeed the more this line will go to the center and to the left side of the blade. We will stop when we hit about the center of the blade just by eyeballing. It's not critical at all. And that's how we swing the blade now. And I can bring it up, look down on the blade, check it, go back and grind. As you can see, I brought in a little bit more light. <laughs> um, this is the bluing, and over here is the ground portion of the blade. Um, and this line between unground and ground is very close to the center line of the blade. So it's like, shaped like a roof. The center line is higher than the two outer edges of the blade. That's exactly what you want. Uh, and as you can probably see, um, the, the finish on this radius is, is stinking good. 
uh, touching this up for final sharpening for grime uh, for scraping will be a breeze and go very fast. Keep in mind that you can use this technique not only for grinding uh, scraper blades. Obviously you can also do um, large radius lathe tooling, form tooling with this technique by swinging them on a, on a large radius with a, with a spindex or something like that on a tool and cutter grinder or a deep grinder. Oh, the this, this same setup works on deep grinder and I will show you that later. If you're ingenious, you could also do this on <laughs> on a uh, on a bench grinder with a piece of wood. If you have a deep bit grinder like this, or like a Deckel SO SOE, a Gordon deep bit grinder, or whatever that has a work head that can be spun around like this, um, you can use this fixture too. Um, just turn this diameter smaller so you can hold it in a collet matching to your machine of course. Clamp it like this, set your 5 degrees down here and swing it like this and move the whole work head in to adjust your depth of cut. Will work perfectly fine. Uh, would even be easier to set up because um, the tool and cutter grinder, the large one, is usually uh, <laughs> set up for a completely different task than you actually want to do. And the D-bit grinder has not much options, so it's very fast to set up. And if you're a bit creative and have a diamond wheel on your uh, bench grinder, you can do that too. Um, put something out here with a hole in it that matches the fixture, like a, a piece of wood and just swing it in front of the, the wheel like this. I guarantee you that this will give you a, a pretty, pretty decent result too. Um, you can angle it like you need and swing the radius like this. Okay, let's take a look at the fixture and how it is designed. Um, those are two M5 screws with large fender washers just to pinch down the blade. Ugh. And these are the different styles of, of the long bikes blades that you that I use. Um, they all have a, a base width of 20 millimeters, but there are narrow ones in front here. This is necked down to 15 millimeter. This is for uh, close quarter work, and those two are wider here. Um, they also have usually a larger radius. This is I think a, a R140 radius uh, for heavy roughing work to remove a lot of material. And you can use the, you can grind these too, like this. Uh, within reason you cannot go super small on the radius because this wider uh, section will get will interfere with the body of the fixture, but the larger blades are for larger radii anyway, so you would move it out like this and swing your uh, 140 radius like this. Uh, this. This is the easiest one, this is 20 millimeters all over, the, over its whole length, so you can adjust it where you want. And the smaller one, uh, the fixture has a has a 20 millimeter slot here, which is uh, one millimeter deep, and it has a narrower slot with 15 millimeter that's uh, two millimeter deep. So the narrower blade will fall down into the, the narrower slot, and I relieve the back here so I can move the blade in a bit farther and grind a little bit larger of a radius, or I can move it very far back to grind a, uh, a 20 millimeter radius for super fine uh, high PPI scraping. And these slots are cut with a little bit of slop because the bodies of these uh, bias blades are laser cut and they, are not, they have tolerance to them. And also they have some draft. Uh, this blade the draft angle from the laser cut, the part is 
uh, wider at the bottom than on the top where the laser enters the material. So this blade does not fit in this orientation, it fits only like this because of the draft on the sides of the part. So yeah, that's the fixed row and the screws will hold um, uh, all styles of blades in place. Uh, this is the flat die machine. This is, as I said, a defined distance from the rotational center of the fixed row way. In my case, uh, 14 millimeter. So I have uh, an idea from where to measure to where. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's a decent way to to precisely shape a large radius on a on a part. Not only a scraper blade, you could also, as I said, use this for if if you need a lathe tool with a very large radius, or even on a part, an actual part with a large radius. can do it on a surface grinder with a spin fixture, on a tool cutter grinder, or on a deep grinder, bench grinder, on the mill, whatever. <laughs> on the mill with a rotary table and a grinding wheel. <laughs> Would work too. Uh, protect the machine from grinding dust if you do that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's grinding a defined radius. Hope you enjoyed this quick one. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.